So you have two handouts. You have your ortho, and then you have your joint replacement. And it's a lot of information. Of course, you're going to be looking at this later. Uh, some of the stuff we don't really go into detail about. But you have your two handouts, okay? So we're going to be working on the ortho one first. And so much of ortho is so easy, thank God that you're gonna do really well with this. Now, so ortho. Ortho is easy as hell, thank God. It's the only easy thing you get, right? So when it comes to uh, renal, which we did already, just remember renal is not who you see first, but ortho might be. Now, so the first thing up here is compartment syndrome. So what I want you to do is turn to your six P's. It used to be that this was five P's. It is now six P's. It's not enough to know six P's. You have to know the order that they appear in. So what would you think would happen first with this page? You think pain? Is she right, Ariana? Yes or no? No. No, what do you think would be first? Um, maybe pallor. You think pallor? Joshua, pick a team. Uh, Are either of these babies right? And how the hell you get a Landry shirt already? <laughs> <laughs> we football fans. He got a Landry shirt on. You ain't living right. Okay, so that's all right. I'm gonna be up there with you. I got my Browns. Now, so what you think, baby? Is she right with pain or is she right with pallor? I think pallor. Pallor. Uh, are both of them high? Slipping Molly's, Jessica. And is neither of them right, or do you want to stick with one part of the team here? Power. You like power? Eddie, what do you think? Oh, so they're all high. You're the only sober one? You want paresthesia? She's right. It's paresthesia. Okay. Okay, so anyway, we've got our little six P's. Paresthesia is first. Pain is second. Be careful with that order. Paresthesia is first, pain is second. Is it enough to say pain? No. Can you just leave it there? Cynthia, what should you say? Huh? You gonna call the pain an eight? No, eight, pain. You think it's just the eight? Stabbing. Now it's stabbing. stabbing. Which one do you want? Because they're not the same thing. Stabbing. You want a stabbing pain? Should she say stabbing pain or should she define it better? Sarah? What should she say? Okay, so here we go. When it comes to this patient, numbness, tingling, my arm fell asleep, it feel funny, that's what your patient gonna say first. If you stupid, stuck on stupid or parked on dumb, then we're not going to clue in that this patient is getting into severe trouble. So you walked in, they're talking about their arm feel funny, they think they fell asleep on it last night, and all this other stuff. That is a red flag. That's when you should have caught it, right there. Paresthesia. Now, a little bit later, not much, half hour later, they're going to say it hurt. You're going to give them something for pain. They're going to say that didn't work. Or either if you're a typical, um, uh, I'm, if you're a nurse that is not compassionate and you walk in the room and you say some smart ass shit like, well, you know, a broken arm would hurt. So I'm gonna need you to know that. And you go get their pain medicine, they're gonna feel like they're whining. And they're not gonna call you back when the pain doesn't get better. They're just gonna say to themselves, stop whining. She said it's supposed to hurt. I've seen it, I'm telling you what I see. Okay, so it hurts, yes, it's supposed to hurt, yes, but it's not supposed to be unrelieved. That is the key. Unrelieved with medication. It did not go and get better. What's an acceptable pain level? Three. Three. Three is an acceptable pain level. It was a 10. She tell you it's a five, I'm feeling good about my life. Three is even better, but at least it went down. You feeling me on this? You gotta know this. Okay, so here we go. We got paresthesia. We have pain and relief with medication. What do you think is next? 
pressure. Pressure and pain may be called pressure in gentlemen. Gentlemen don't whine. They don't complain. They may say it feels like a lot of pressure on my arm. Oh, okay, that's pain. Okay, so pressure and pain might be kind of interchangeably, but the key with the pain is it's unrelieved. So it's gonna get worse, okay? So pressure and pain might be interchangeable. Now, if you look a little bit further, what's last? No, you missed that. Pulse lastness. Your little ass is dead in that arm. You ain't got no pulse, they get dead in the arm. Okay, pulselessness is last. If you don't even have a pulse, we really got major problems, don't we all? So what's the complication? Amputation, because you didn't recognize compartment syndrome when you saw it. Okay, now here's the fun part. Write compartment syndrome going across the top. And let's look at the word, because it's so easy. Compartment has artery right in it. This is an arterial issue. You have lost your circulation, which is always artery. Arteries give us circulation. You're not having any circulation because your cast was either too tight or something else is going on. The most common reason is the cast. So here's my trick. You know I got tricks. Any complaints that is not about itching is compartment syndrome with a cast. Anybody complaining with a cast has compartment syndrome until proven otherwise, unless they're complaining about itching. If they're complaining about itching, okay. But otherwise, my nurses, they know it's compartment syndrome. That should help big time. Okay, now, how do we take this patient who's clearly had a broken something or trauma or something? How do we monitor? Every two hours we're doing, look at the word, neurovascular assessments. Every two hours we are doing neurovascular assessments in trauma patients, traction patients, immediate post-op patients. We're doing neurovascular assessments. We call it on the unit CERC checks. CERC is short for circulatory checks. Did you do CERC checks in five? You didn't. Oh, let me get in there again. You are checking for arterial circulation. When you hear the word circulation, you are going to remember that means arterial. When you hear the word circulation, you're going to remember that means arterial. These things are big on this test. Very, very big. Okay? So when we're looking at this patient and we're trying to make sure they're okay, our neurovascular assessment includes six P's. I tell you to add two C's. When you add two C's, you get capillary refill and coolness. Capillary refill and coolness. Don't worry, Rachel, you'll be back in the system. I had to get started, okay? Okay, now, so capillary refill and coolness. If you look at this thing that says pallor, be careful, babies. Pallor is truly a P, but I want you to add a little extra love. I want you to remember cyanotic nail tips. Cyanotic nail beds or nail tips. Cyanotic nail beds or nail tips. That's a big deal. Now let me remind you of something totally unrelated because I need good nurses. You are in the midst of some bullshit right now with your little uh, uh, 2018 whatever, whatever, whatever. When I was an RN in the 80s, my bullshit was cocaine. Yours is fentanyl and heroin. Your job is to remember the, the little secret we taught, we taught you, right? 
How do we know if a patient is out of their mind with heroin or fentanyl? What did I teach you? Blue lips, blue lips and blue fingertips. You gotta know that. Okay, that's a side note. I just need you smart. Fingertips and lips, blue. Fingertips and lips, blue. Best way to know they're on heroin or fentanyl. Okay, so when I think of that, I always remind you. Okay, baby, so you got it going on. Now, so we got our neurovascular assessment, six Ps, two Cs. What is our first nursing action when we think that's what it is after our assessment? Good, my baby's got it right. So let's go, let's talk shop. We have a rule. You are not calling the doctor for every little stupid crazy thing, are you? You have something to do first before you call a doctor in most instances. There are five reasons why you can actually call the doctor first. This is one of them. Compartment syndrome, what are the other four? Wait a minute, didn't Rhonda teach you a trick? She taught you re C's. This is one of your C's. What's an R? Rupture uterus. What's an E? Epiglottitis. What are more C's? Consent form. What's another C? Complaints after cataract surgery. In other words, beloved, these are the only reasons why you will call the doctor first. Everything else, you should be doing something. In the case of compartment syndrome, they shit you can do. This patient got on a cast, last I checked, you can't saw it off. You need a doctor to saw it off. So that's why you call them. Now, the only exception to the compartment syndrome rule is if you have compartment syndrome retraction. In that event, you can release the traction. Normally, watch this, normally you never remove traction. But in the case of compartment syndrome, you can break this rule and remove the traction. First, before you call the doctor. So compartment syndrome is one of those, call the doctor first. So far so good? Now let's explore what really happened to your patient. Because it sounds cute, six Ps, two Cs and shit, but what happened? Let's take my daughter. My daughter fell off her bike on our street uh, and she broke her arm. And in this case, she broke her uh, arm and had to have a cast. And so when she broke her arm, the neighbors, you know, I've been on the street this forever. So the boys and the girls that come to me, Miss Shelly, not Miss Shelly, but uh, Shelly, they just call me Shelly. Marissa, Marissa, she's, she's, she fell off her bike. She's in a lot of pain. Now I get down the street, she's 11. She's got about 50 boys around her trying to pick her up and carry her. They love little Marissa. And she's like, mommy, it hurts, blah, blah, blah. We go to one of, I feel, the best ERs I've ever seen. Shout out to Richmond Heights General. And so we go to University Hospital to Richmond Heights and she gets a damn cast on her arm and I loved her nurse. Her nurse was a great nurse. She looked at my little girl and she said, now listen Marissa, when you go home tonight, you cannot lay on this arm. You cannot sleep like this. You have to sleep like this. So you have to keep this elevated. Now I'm neurotic. All nurses are. I put that baby in my bed. Y'all know that. Yeah, I gotta watch her arm, right? Now this big old 11 year old baby to sleep while is in my bed. It's crazy. It's a little retarded, okay? But if I didn't have her in my bed, I'm running to her room to look in her bed because I'm a nurse and I'm a neurotic mommy and God forbid all your children are so screwed because you're a nurse. So you're neurotic, you're out of control, but you're checking to make sure the arm is up. How about if Marissa didn't get that good nurse to teach her? How about if Marissa went to bed, here we go, like this? How does 
a Venus return work? Does it go this way or does it go this way? Hand, arm, shoulder, heart. Venus return. If you lay like this, Venus will not return and the blood will start to pool down and around in here. The cast that they put on my baby will get tighter because of the swelling. When it gets tighter, initially it'll feel like she fell asleep. If somebody clues in right around there, she'll be fine. If they don't, the cast will start to hurt and get tighter but she's sleeping, so the pain may not be recognized initially. And that cast, as it gets tighter, it creates more swelling, and we start a vicious cycle of crazy. As it gets tighter, it presses on all the arteries. The arteries will not perfuse the hand. The hand will start to change colors and become pallor then cyanotic nail beds. Then if I wanted her to touch her fingers to her thumb, which is how we check this patient, she couldn't do it. So now we're experiencing paralysis. Eventually her pulses will disappear. That's compartment syndrome in order, okay? So paresthesia spurs, maybe it's described as pressure or something, but pain is the hallmark. Paresthesia is first. Feels like you fell asleep on your arm. It really starts off very subtle, okay? Now, if you keep it elevated, you enhance venous return. The swelling does not get worse. The cast does not get tighter, okay? That's all it is, all right? Now, if it's compartment syndrome, she needs her cast sawed off of her arm. That's it. You can't do that shit. You gotta call a doctor. Okay? So that's the deal.